Hello, and we are live. And I forgot to check my mic and my camera. So give me a sec. But hey, everyone, welcome back to the Here Energetics. Uh, hopefully, the mic just changed a lot. But we're super pumped to join us today. Uh, today, we hit, or not today, but in the past, we hit over 4,000 subscribers just a few weeks ago. And today, we're just doing like a live QA to celebrate. So if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, feel free to bring them up. And yeah, that's really the plan. It's just going to be a chill, like 60 minutes. Um, so yeah, feel free to ask anything. I will start with, there was a super chat sent a while ago. Um, and then we'll just start going through questions or comments or things like that. And yeah, so just to get things rolling, I'll just tell you a little bit about what's happening in the future with the Tier Apologetics. And then I'll just answer some questions. So the plan for the future is to just keep doing like shows like this. Um and to do shows like interviews and things like that. Like I'm doing an interview later today. Uh, so yeah, plans trying to, I'm trying to do like two podcasts a week. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. It really just depends on the week. And that's that. I'm probably going to stop doing shorts and like little short videos soon and just focus on the longer form stuff um, just for my sanity and time. Um, but yeah, that's really the plan. So let's get into some questions. Uh, feel free to ask anything and we'll see how it goes. So Tim, Chris, send in a super chat. Uh, thank you so much, Tam. So grateful for your, for your support. Really, really appreciate it. And he said, what epistemic standard should be used in analyzing evidence for God? From an atheist perspective, what sort of evidence should they take as valid? Um, so, Chris, I don't have this question pulled up just because it was sent a while ago, but I saved it. Um, what epistemic standard should be used in analyzing evidence for God? So, if I'm understanding you right, um, I like a broadly Bayesian concept obviously we can't be like perfect Bayesians but I do think like if we're going to make an argument for like God's existence we should focus on like one simplicity and two explanatory power um so I think that's sort of a really like great way of looking at things um because I think scientific understanding is very similar so I would use something along those lines to evaluate evidence for God and from an atheistic perspective what sort of evidence should they take as valid I would say anything that like raises your credence in theism should be evidence for theism. Um, data that's more expected under theism than atheism should be evidence for theism. In the same way, data that's more expected on atheism than theism um, should be evidence for atheism. So that's kind of how I would do it. And yeah, that's kind of what I think. So great question, Chris. Uh, feel free to keep adding questions. So the next question comes from the New Testament theologian Nick Quint. What's up, Nick? It's been a minute since I've heard from you. Um, so how have I cha changed, challenge your mind on a theology topic? Um, something that I've thought a lot about, or maybe not thought, I haven't thought enough about it, but something that I do think about is like women in ministry. So obviously it's a big thing that you are like an advocate for, Nick. And like, um, you've really helped me like see the arguments for that. Um, because a lot of times like you grow up and you just kind of naturally assume things like, um, but you really, Nick, have opened my mind to say like, Hey, there's a good case you can make to say that like. Uh, women should be like pastors and things like that. So that's something, Nick, that you've really challenged me on. What else? Um, entire sanctification is really interesting. Um, I don't know if I buy it because I don't know if it's possible in this life. Um, but it's definitely something to think about. Like, can we be like entirely sanctified in this life? Um, so that's something that's really interesting that you've brought up, Nick. And yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things. I'm just very grateful for your knowledge. And I'd encourage people, if they are not subscribed already, go subscribe to the New Testament theologist Nick, Qu Nick Quint. Um, we're going to have you on. One of the plans to do in the future is to start doing call-in shows like once a month, every every few weeks, something like that. Um, and I would love to have Nick on. We could do like a New Testament show sometime. So that's hopefully in the plans in the future. And yeah, that's that um you are welcome chris uh next question comes from swift c which says um how has your walk with christ been so it's interesting because like for me personally i've like over the past like um i graduated college in may so i've transitioned in may from like being a full-time student and like that whole life of, since you're like a little baby in kindergarten of being like a student first um into like actually just like working a full-time job um which is why I always have to do these shows at least like in the night because I, like, I have a job. Um, today's different. We have election day off. So go out and vote if you haven't already. Um, but then, so that's why I'm doing this at like two o'clock. But so it's been interesting. It's been highs and lows. Like um, it's like when you work full time for the first time, I feel like you just like set your routine of like, hey, I wake up 
and then I go to work and then I do my job and then I maybe I go do like church or hang out with friends and then I go to sleep and it's a repeat and it's been kind of weird finding that routine um, and trying to find like my faith in Christ through that. Um, but one thing I've learned is just trying to be very intentional, intentional as I walk in my life about like uh, really living for my faith and finding those moments. Um, so that's something that I, I've been learning is to be intentional about my faith and really pursue it. So yeah, it is great to see you too, bro. I bet I am so in, and we got to get these call-in shows rolling. Like I was thinking about my calendar. Um, this week's pretty packed. Next week's pretty packed. Then it's Thanksgiving week, which is kind of weird. Um, maybe we'll do something like that Monday of Thanksgiving. Probably not though. Cause I probably need to just take that week off. Um, or we could do like a Sunday, or like a Saturday calling. Hmm. All kinds of ideas. Um, but we'll figure that out, Nick. Maybe we'll chop it up. Maybe that last week in November, if anything, would be open. Like I'm just looking at my calendar. Maybe like Wednesday the 30th could be a fun time for the first call-in show. Uh, we shall see. I got to focus on other things at the moment. But we will definitely do this. Um, what's up, Swift? Uh, thanks for your question, Nadimos. I don't really comment on politics. I mean, I vote and I have opinions. But it really goes like beyond the scope of what I'm trying to do with the show. So I'm not really going to say comment on like political stuff. Um, so yeah, and now I'm caught up on the chat. So we'll take a minute. Um, and if you have any questions, anyone just like feel free to put them in um, like apologetics, theology, life, uh, stuff like that. I'm super pumped that we hit 4,000 subscribers. We're at like 4,050 now, I think. Um, so that's super cool. So I'm super excited about that and 4,062 at the moment. Um, so yeah, the show has been super fun and I really love doing this. Uh, it's a really great time being able to like make this podcast and things like that. And it's super fun. I was talking with my friends about this. Um, it's just something I really enjoy doing. Like it's just fun to do this and just think about these really big questions and have a platform where hopefully I can be like honoring God at the same time is super cool. And I love doing it. So um Come on, let's go. Put You can put in um, your questions or anything like that because I would love to get some more questions. And yeah, so time wasting. Um, what do you guys think about like, um, oh, we got a question from um, Demos. Atheist or skeptic you respect the most? There's a lot of them I really respect. Um, probably my favorite one to listen to on the YouTube side of things is Emerson Green. Um, maybe because he just shared my video out about skeptical, skeptical theism like yesterday or today. Um, but I don't know. I think we actually have a lot of things in common. I don't go as far as Emerson on some topics. Um, obviously, like we're not like he's an atheist and a theist, but like we just have like, I just feel like when I listen to him, I'm like, if I was an atheist, I'd probably be a lot like Emerson. Um, but I'm not an atheist. Or maybe I'd just be on a full on like reductive materialist. I don't know. Either Emerson or like the opposite of Emerson. Um, nothing really in the middle. So, yeah. I mean, I respect Emerson a lot. He's a really great show. Um, who else do I like to listen to? Cosmic Skeptics is pretty good. Uh, my friend, I have a friend named Jono. He has a YouTube channel. It's just called like Jonathan Staker. Uh, he doesn't post a lot, and I haven't heard from him in a while. And I'm sure he might come and troll at some point during this live stream um but he's really i love him he's great i'd encourage people to check him out if you want um who else rash rules has some good stuff i'm just going through my subscriptions right now uh i don't know if he's really a skeptic but the philosophize this podcast is really good i really enjoy that podcast very based um i appreciate like uh digital gnosis and nathan's like openness it seems like he's really willing to talk about anything anytime like i could just like send nathan a dm right now and say like hey come join my show he would probably be in here in like five minutes so respect him a lot um <laughs> who else is good alex malpass has good stuff the relay theology team is awesome uh and i'm just going through my subscriptions uh debated matt delahunty which i enjoyed and i respect matt a lot obviously i disagree with him on a lot of things uh but yeah i respect matt he's a, he seems like a really good guy and yeah okay what are your thoughts on universalism and eternal conscious torment okay that's a great question thanks so see so i'm actually i would like i'm like 
right now what I'd say is I'm like an annihilationist, but I'm not like super committed to that position. Um, so that's where I am. I definitely like universalism. I've become more and more open to it. I'm still not a universalist because I think there's just some passage where like the Bible talk about like a second death or like a final judgment. And I'm like, Ooh, like, I don't know if you're a universalist, how you're going to get around this. Like, that's tough. Like you have, you have your answers, but I just don't know if they're very good. Um, so I have more respect for universalism. I think philosophically it's very defensible. Like a lot of the objections where like, it makes this like meaningless or things like that, I think are pretty bad. And I think you can beat it. I think there's just some biblical data um, that really pushes me against universalism. Um, eternal conscious torment. Uh, Biblically, I mean, I think you can defend it. I don't really, like, I can see how you can get eternal conscious torment reading the Bible, but I don't think it's really clear. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think, like, if you, like, someone just read the Bible without any, like, background with, like, what their culture thought, like, where would they end up on that topic? And I'd probably think something like an annihilationist. That's what I think. But, I mean, it's possible. I think there's some, like, moral problems with eternal conscious torment, like, thinking about, like, someone that is going to suffer for, like, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, and they're just getting started. Like, that seems really hard for me to see. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't want to say it's impossible, because, like, one of the things I'm realizing is, like, my mind's very limited, but it's hard for me to see how eternal conscious torment um, will work. So, thanks for the question, Swift C. Okay, next question. Um, thank you so much for this question. What Bible passage do you love the most? Um, whew, there's a few ones I really like. Um, James 4, like 13 through 16. Um, let me pull it up right now because it's been a minute since I thought about this. Um, but I've just really resonated with this passage. Um, so it says, like, come now, you who say, today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. So I just find that a super beautiful passage because I think it's very easy to like have these plans of like, here, I'm going to do this next year or this week. Da, da, da. Um, but really living day to day and saying like, if the Lord wills, I'll do this or that. Like today I have a day off. And if the Lord wills, I will do this or that um things like that because it's super hard for me because i like to always be thinking about the future and i find myself guilty of this very very often um but yeah just trying to live day to day and if the lord wills would do this or that i think is something that is super hard but it's something that i need to work on as a christian and it really like challenges me um so yeah great question and pump it up pump us up with those questions um feel free to put questions anything like that oh drop something um also feel free to drop a super chat if you want. Um, your support is super grateful for the show. Uh, and yeah, it just helps us keep the lights on. So um, question master, we all are like saying like question master, but there's no questions. Um, yeah, Matthew Harkey is also really cool. So he's a great guy. Respect him a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, I would think I'm a hopeful universalist as well. I don't hope anyone goes to hell. Um, so I just don't really see it there in the scriptures. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. So yeah, it'd be fun to maybe do like the live like call in show sometime. Maybe we'll like if we don't get any questions, maybe we'll do that for a little bit. Um, I'm just thinking through. So we'll just kind of see how things go. And yeah, um, I have about 45 more minutes left of doing this. So if you guys have any questions and anything like that, just feel free to plug them in. So that's what we'll do. And we'll just keep waiting for a little bit. And we will see what happens um, now as we keep waiting. So what's happening in the future with it here at Paul Jackson? I'll just tell you about some stuff that I think is super cool. So I had a really cool conversation um, with John Cronin recently about like Hindu natural theology. And what he talks about is how like Hindu natural theology is actually pretty similar to like theistic natural theology or not theistic, like Western natural theology. Um, and that brings, makes theism super interesting thinking about how they might be similar. Um, so that's worth thinking about. I talked with Dr. Nevin Clement Haga about how skeptical theism is too skeptical because if you're going to be skeptical about like how God would allow evil, you might also need to be skeptical about like your own like religious experiences and things like that. That was super thought provoking. Um, also working on a cumulative case for Christianity. So I released part two recently. Um, this playlist is just called like why Christianity is true. Um, so check that out. If you are interested in that, that's a super fun playlist. And part three will be coming out, uh, end of this month, probably. 
So that's going to be looking at like trying to like look at the nature of design. So my plan is to do one episode a month. Um, so it'll take like 10 months for around well, eight months for this whole thing to come out. And then we will transition to the next project, uh, like a lecture series. And I think that's going to be on the problem of evil is my plan for my next like little like lecture series. And I think like, cause I'm not like a author or anything like that. Instead of like writing books and things like that, I'm going to just be doing like these like cumulative of cases. And I'm hoping to do like one episode a month for the rest of my life, um, just on different topics, just exploring different things. So maybe in the future we'll do things like heaven and hell or like ancient authors or like Christian life or, uh, divine hiddenness just like all kinds of things like whatever i'm reading a lot and thinking a lot about is the plan so yeah um ever read philo's works in the first century i have not but that is on my giant list of books i want to read i would love to read philo sometime are you a minimal facts or maximal facts for the resurrection for the or and why yeah this is good um questions you have like the minimal facts of like Habermas and Lacona or like the maximal data approach that like the McGrews or like Jonathan McClatchy or other people want to advocate um hmm. I mean I think maximal data if it works is what you'd want like the more facts you can have and the more data you can have if it works then that's great and that's what you want um be great to have more than just a few facts and just like generally say like the New Testament is reliable so I definitely would love for maximal data to be true I uh, I kind of wanted to take do a both and rather than an either or, because I think if you could do a both and that might be helpful. It's so like, hey, we have these minimal facts, but also um, we also have this data that shows it's generally very reliable. So I think I'd love to just do a both and. Like I think the minimal facts is pretty good, um, but if you can sprinkle in some gospel reliability and things like that into your case, uh, it just makes the minimal facts that much better. So I think when you can put the both of them together, I think that's going to be the best path. Um yeah, so that's kind of what I would see is like a, a both hand approach. Okay, next question says, how much of the anti-Nicene fathers have you read? Justin Martyr, et cetera. Okay, so I am not a church um, historian or anything. So I, the anti-Nicene fathers, I'm probably like, like who are they? Um, I mean, I've read some of the church fathers. I've read like Clement of Rome. I've read Augustine. I've read Athanasius of Alexandria, um, different church fathers like that. Have I read Justin Martyr? I don't know if I've read Justin Martyr. I can't remember. Um, but just a few of them. So I definitely want to read more. Like one of the things I'm really trying to do is read like one like modern Christian book and one like Christian book from like a dead person from a long time ago. So right now I'm reading um, Dark Knight of the Soul by John Cross. So I know that's more like 14, 1500s. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of my thought there. Yeah. Um, John C. Guitar says, congrats on 4,000 subscribers. I'm excited to see what you will do with the channel in the future. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your support, uh, Josh. And thank you for tuning in for a sec. And I hope you stay tuned to see what we do in the future because I'm excited as well. Um, yep. All right. Nicholas Hessler says, what are your thoughts on arguments from naturalists for fine tuning? All right, arguments from naturalists. Let me just make sure I'm getting you right. Arguments from naturalness, fine tuning. You might need to clarify. Um, yeah, you're gonna have to clarify probably what you mean by like naturalness. But I mean, I think that like arguments from fine tuning are super powerful. Like you could look at like say like, hey, there's a lot of different ways the universe could have gone, and the way that it did go seems awfully suspicious and like allowing for conscious life to exist. Uh, so that's a big chip in favor of theism. So that's something that I think is super cool. Um, you can feel free to clarify if you want. Um, and yeah, that's it. So need to know. Thanks, Justin Martyr. This work is long, so I get it. Um, yeah, here's what we'll do. I think this will be fun because I've been thinking about it for a while. Is in like 10 minutes, I'll do like a little like call in part. Um, and what that means is I'll just put the StreamYard link in. Um, and if you have a question or anything like that, you're going to be able to just like, um, like put it in. So this is really risky because I'm just going to like put the stream yard link in and we'll see what's going to happen. Maybe no one will join. Um, yeah, I don't really know what's going to happen, but I mean, I wrote, I wrote 4,000 subscriber Q and a special. So maybe just, just throw something out, um, and just see what happens. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the link in, keep asking questions in the live chat for like five more minutes. I'm going to tweet the link out. Um, and if you have any questions that you want to ask, like, live, you can have your camera off. That's fine. 
um, put in, once you get in, put in the private chat what you want to talk about. And yeah, so we'll see if anyone takes it. Um, and yeah, I'm going to put the link out. And then if you want to join live, I will tweet it out as well. Um, so yeah, we will be taking live calls in about 10 minutes. Come connect. So if you do connect, it's probably going to be about like, I'll do like five minutes because I don't have a lot of time because I need to um, <laughs> get some stuff done and I need some time to just like get ready for the week. So we will do live calls in like 10 minutes um, because this is something that I want to do in the future because I like, I've been thinking a lot about like what to do with this show. Um, and one of the things I feel like there's a big hole in is like doing like these live conversations because I think that like some people when they get into these conversations um, feel like they have to have all the answers and like, I'm trying to do the opposite of saying like, Hey, here's what I think. And here's what I like, here's what I really believe. And I'm convinced of this, but yeah, there's a bunch of like unanswered questions that I have to like examine and think about and things like that. So that's something like why I think in a call in format, it could be fun. Cause we're kind of just like looking at the edge of a thought without any like time to like prepare or anything like that. Because I think sometimes I do like rebuttals and things like that. Um, and with the rebuttals, it's kind of like, like it's scripted and it's planned out and it's very like easy, but when you just do like a live like call and it's like, ooh, like right here, boom, like what do you think? And I'm just like, oh, I gotta think about this. Um, and hopefully they have guests. Like going solo is not really my style for this stuff. Um, that's why I never really do live streams by myself. Um, except for this exact moment. So yeah. Okay. Um, any other comments? Um, I'd love to join, but I'm sadly in school. Why are you on here? But we have when you have school. Uh, big sad. Um, well, the atheist skeptics have a network going that's very strong. Plus discord is a thing. Yeah. And the atheists have a very strong, like call and show like scene. So I think that's super cool. Um, and it's something to really think about if you're a theist, show, like there is a need for that. So yeah. Um, yes, I'm aware of Pine Creek and Nathan and all those people. And we would love to have you call. Um, and unfortunately you have a meeting and all oh, those pesky meetings. So yeah um any other questions or things like that because i have it pulled up and yeah that is that so we will just keep on going and keep on rolling um yeah i'm super pumped to have four thousand subscribers and i know i switched the time around because originally it was going to be later tonight um but unfortunately i'm not doing later tonight so then the whole thing just changed and now we're just doing um this at like 2 30 in the afternoon and it's the first live stream that we've done in a hot minute. So, you know, I, I get it. Um, and if you're also like not on the East Coast, it's like lunchtime, it's what C said. Uh, but if you're in Europe, it's like night, evening. Because um, I was following the Bundesliga a little bit right before I got on here. Because um, I really like to follow soccer. So I was following the Dortmund and um, Wolfsburg match. So uh, because I really like Gio right now because he's an American. And I really like supporting the Americans. And the World Cup's coming up. So that's super exciting. And yeah, that is that. So I got no questions. I got no one connecting with me. So I will give this about five more minutes. And if nothing's going to happen, um, oh, something happened. Okay. Well, we'll just keep rolling for the time being. And we have another question that I will answer in one sec. And yeah. Okay. So. Do you have a personal YouTube channel recommendations for A, apologetics, B, Christianity in general, C, atheist, D, other? Okay, so apologetics, uh, I hear an apologetics, of course. Um, but um, I mean, there's a lot of good channels out there. Uh, Exploring Reality is really good. Uh, my friend Dan, Invoking Theism is good. Christian Idealism, Philosophy for All. Um, Parker's Pensies is really good. Um, Cameron has some good stuff. Um, uh, those are some of my favorites. Those are who I listen to the most in the apologetics realm. Inspired philosophy is good stuff. Yeah. Those are really my favorites. Um, exploring reality is my favorite by far though. Like I, I think exploring reality is great. And I love how Than thinks about things. Um, yeah. Christianity. I, hmm. Christianity. I really, I listen to a lot of Tim Keller sermons. 
I really enjoyed listening to Tim Keller. Um, so he's great. I was like, I like listening to John Piper. Like I'm not a Calvinist, but I do really enjoy his sermons. Um, who else? Those are some of the big ones that I can think of. Um, the Atlanta Christian is good. Um, yeah, those are some of my favorites. Then for like atheists, uh, I mean, I talked about them before, but Emerson Green, like that's probably my favorite atheistic podcast. There's things like Philosophize This, which is really good. Um, you know, he's not, I don't know what exactly he is. Like, I don't know if he's an atheist or things like that. Um, who else? Uh, James Fodor has good stuff. Digital Gnosis has some good stuff. Joe Schmidt has some good stuff, though he's more agnostic. Um, yeah, those are some of my favorites. Other philosophize this, love philosophize this. I don't know really where he'd fall on the whole like religious side of things. I think he's more like atheistic, agnostic. Um, yeah, he is a really good channel. So I like that a lot. So yeah, those are some of my favorite. I'm Speedy Alex says, love your channel. Just lurking since I'm busy at work and spotty connection. Well, thank you for the kind words. Appreciate you and your time. Um, and you're lurking for a few minutes. And yeah, thanks for the support. And hopefully we'll keep rolling. Um, Swift C says, this may be very, a very touchy question, but what are your thoughts on Christianity and LGBT plus? And it's very touchy. And if you want don't want to answer, I understand. Yeah, it's really it's a hard topic because like anytime you put together like Christianity and like pressing social issues. It's tough for Christians. Um, I would say, like, I try to be biblically faithful um, and at the same time love Jesus and love others. So when you, like, address that question, I think you have to have that mindset of, like, hey, as a Christian, like, you got to hold to biblical teaching, um, and that's super important. But at the same time, you got to love people. And I don't think it's either or. Again, I think it's, like, a both and. But that's generally how I'd approach it. And, yeah, it is a, it's a hard topic. Like, it is a hard topic. So I'll give you that. Thanks for the question. Yeah, so the, that's where we're at right now. Um, really appreciate everyone tuning in, uh, your time and things like that. And yeah, we have no one that's taking the bait on calling in. So I don't know what we're going to do with that. Um, but we are going to do call-in shows in the future. So stay tuned for that. That is super exciting, I think. All right, our next question is from Josh C. Guitar, which says, what do you think of transcendental arguments in general? I haven't looked into them properly yet, but I'd appreciate a general opinion slash feeling. Okay, yeah, that's a really good question. So thanks, Josh. So mm, I'm not super well-versed in transcendental arguments. Like things when I'm thinking of that are like things from like the laws of logic to God. But I have a hard time thinking about like, how is God going to explain like why logic exists? Like why the law of non-contradiction holds or something like that? Because I just... Yeah, it just seemed hard to, like, how does God explain the law of non-contradiction? Because it seems like, to me, that's something that's true in, like, all possible worlds. Um, and I'd say a similar thing about, like, God and math. Like, how does God make 2 plus 2 equal to 4? Like, could God make 2 plus 2 equal to 5? I don't think so. Could God make the law of non-contradiction not hold? I don't think so. Um, so I have a hard time seeing how you can, like, round transcendental arguments in God. Um yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at. I tend to think like the laws of logic and like things like math are like real things that exist. Um, but how it all works out, whew, that's kind of above my pre grade. So that's a good question, Josh. And it's something that you really got to think about. Um, and I got to think about more. So I appreciate that question. And yeah, that's a super good question. So thanks for that, Josh. So we are caught up on questions for the moment. Um, and now we're not. But um yeah, in case you're just joining in, just feel free to ask like any questions, things like that. Um, and feel free to always send in a super chat. Super appreciative of the one super chat that was already sent in already before the show. And if you want to do that, I would be super, super um, appreciative of that. So that is that. And let's get to the next question from Jose Martinez. Welcome, Jose. Good to see you. He says, are you a theistic evolutionist or an intelligent design proponent? Okay, well, I mean, I think you could be a theistic evolutionist and like still hold to ID um like there's id people that would hold to common descent like we're all like yeah um and then so i don't think they're mutually exclusive i mean i kind of just like with evolution i'm, I'm kind of content to just say i don't know 
Um, I mean, I definitely don't think the earth is 6,000 years old. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that like there has to be design involved and like there has to be teleology. And like, even if like you hold evolution, things like convergence, um, seem to me to be like really suggestive of like intelligent design. So I would say I definitely hold to like some version of intelligent design, maybe not like, um, Stephen Meyer's version of intelligent design, but I hold to some version of it. Um, and then am I atheistic evolutionist? I mean, I'm open to it. I don't really see it as like a problem, but I haven't really seen enough to really push me there yet. If you understand that. So yeah, that's kind of my thoughts, Jose. That's a good question. You're welcome. Swift C. Yeah. Very challenging question. Um, Jose Martinez says, are you an idealist or a substance dualist? I lean towards idealism just because I think it's simpler. It makes it better sense of things to me like us living in god's mind to me just makes a lot of sense if we think about god being foundational and like everything that exists just being like his mind the product of his mind that makes a lot of sense to me it seems like a very simple account of things when we can explain everything with just mind rather than having like mind and matter so yeah i i I lean towards idealism i'm not like totally hard sold on it like idealism robust but i mean I, i think idealism is very plausible by my lights so that's that. I'm checking to see if we have any questions. No questions on Twitter. Um, checking YouTube to see if there were any questions on YouTube. And for whatever reason, I feel like I'm still catching my breath. Like, I don't know why, but like ever since we did this, like I started doing this today, I feel like I'm kind of like, whew, it's a lot of talking. And I think it's because usually when I do these things, I'm not on the talking end. I kind of ask the questions. But um, right now, I've, I'm just like, my chest hurts a little bit, so. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Really appreciate you and support. Um, if you don't have a question, maybe just tell me your favorite thing about it here in Apologetics. Be like, here's why, like, here's why I'm here, um, or here's why I still listen to you, or things like that. Because some of you, like, I've seen names like Swift C and Jose Martinez. And I'm like, you guys have been here for a while, like years. Um, so, yeah. But you asked, um, what do books do you recommend on the problem of evil? Yeah. Um, hmm. I, I've read a lot on, like, evolutionary evil recently. Well, not recently, more like last year. And there's some good books. Like, Bethany Sullider has a really good book. Um, John Schneider has a really good book on, like, evolutionary evil. Trent Dougherty has a good book um so those are some of the, my favorites on the evolutionary side of things i've been reading the blackwell companions to the problem of evil which is good because it covers a lot of different things also super high level and like you almost have to be like trained in philosophy to understand it because a lot of parts where i'm like oh i don't really know what he's talking about um so yeah um josh rasson has some good writing on the problem of evil if you read like his debate book with felipe leon Especially like the great story theodicy chapter. Um yeah, those are my favorites. If I was gonna say, like, hey, read this book on the problem of evil. Oh, uh, I don't know, because I don't know if I've really read a lot of pop level, like, here's why I got a lot of e- lots of evil books, which maybe like for authors out there, that's something you should do. Because I haven't yeah. Um yeah, so that's kind of my take on it right now. So yeah. And my plan is like, so I told in the beginning, I'm doing like these lecture series. Um, so I'm working on the why Christianity is true series. I'm doing a video a month, it's 10 parts. So we'll do November and December, we'll get through part four by the end of the year. And then through June, we should, by the end of June, we should wrap up and like say, here is why Christianity is true. About an hour and a half, two hours, um, maybe three hours will be the whole playlist. Um, and then after that, my plan is to dive into the problem of you and do like a big long lecture series and like different arguments from evil and how I'd respond and looking at like plausible, like the odysseys or defenses. So that's my plan in the future to have like a super long lecture series on the problem of evil. So that is the plan in the future. Um, so stay tuned for that. I'm super pumped for that. And I don't really know how many parts it's going to be, but we will just cross that bridge when we come to it because. Yeah. I don't probably be like, End of 2023, into 2024, um, maybe into 2025, depending on how long it takes. So that's something to stay tuned for. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, Jose Martinez, thank you so much for the super chat. That is totally blank. Super grateful for your super chat. Um, thank you so much, Jose Martinez. Really appreciate you and all your support um, for the Apologetic. So thank you so much. So, so grateful for you. Um, and yeah, I was like so like down. And like, da, 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 da. What are you talking? I got a smile. Life is good. Um, so yeah. Okay. A question from Matthew Fernley. How did you become to be a Christian? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah. Um, I f- grew up in like a Christian environment. Um, so that's something that's kind of always been there. So like I said, the prayers and was like five, six, seven years old and got baptized when I was like six. Um, things like that. But it never, I never really was like super seriously into it. And this kind of also ties into your, um, what made you interested in apologetics thing was my um, freshman and sophomore year of high school. I mean, I wasn't dumb, but I was just like, not really like following God in the way I lived. Um, and then someone I knew, a friend died in a car accident. And for the first time, really, I thought a lot more about like the big questions, like does God exist or like, is heaven real or things like that? Um, and I really started asking those questions, um, through my junior year of high school. Like I remember like first learning about apologetics, even though I didn't really know the word for it. And I'd be like really confused about certain things. Um, so that I'd like be at youth group and I'd like go to the bathroom to like read answers in Genesis articles. Um, cause all I knew was young earth creationism at the time. Um, but over time I got exposed to like, I had a senior project on like worldview and stuff like that. And I came to like learn about different worldviews and I like start reading about apologetics and I left that like really being sold that Christianity was true. And from that, this is now like my senior year of high school. I like dedicated my life to Christ and just like committed myself to Christianity. So that's kind of how that happened. Um, I really believe Christianity was true and that's how I became a Christian. So, and ever since then, it's really been like, four or five years now that's kind of the direction that my life is gone and now i'm like having this scary existential like crisis about like the meaning of my life because i'm thinking about wow i just like that that was like forever ago um today or tomorrow we do what the lord wills um so that's how i became a christian and what made me interested in apologetics was when my friend passed like just thinking about like these big questions like like is heaven real does god exist like these are important things that you have to think about so that's kind of that story have your views have you changed your views on topics over the years or are your views still the same my views have changed a lot um there's a lot of things where my views have either like shifted or loosened or changed or like any combination of those things um yeah i mean i could give a lot of examples like i've yeah i mean my thoughts on like free will i've become more sympathetic to like compatibilism even though i'd probably still hold a libertarian free will but i'm Definitely that compatibilism stuff is like pushing me a lot recently. Um, different like theodicies, um, questions about like evolution, questions about like Calvinism, um, heaven, hell, uh, Catholic, Catholicism. Like I just, there's just been so many things where my views have like changed and like I thought about them. Um, so there's a lot of that like that, that I've been super, um, yeah, I've been super, like, my views have changed so, so much recently on all kinds of these issues. So that has happened. And I think my views will continue to change. Like, one of the things I've thought a lot about recently is, like, the doctrine of, like, hell. And, like, what does that mean? Um, so, yeah. All right, next question comes from Nas Nayame. Nai- Nas Nayame. Um, sorry if I said that wrong. Um, what are some of the common beliefs that churches – hold that you don't believe or agree with that's a good question um i mean so i guess you could say like growing up in like popular evangelical culture maybe because obviously like there's different churches with like different beliefs um so yeah um let's just go with that so let's just say like when we're looking at like popular culture like what beliefs do i think have changed um I definitely think like evangelical thoughts about things like um, hell. I mean, I definitely, I'm not saying that like ECT is impossible, 
But there's a lot of times where I think eternal conscious torment is probably false. Um, so that's one thing that my views have changed towards. Um, what else? That's a good question. Um, I definitely think that like, I kind of grew up believing like Catholicism was Catholicism was like this big bad wolf that like evangelicals had to avoid. Um, my mind's become more open to it. Like I'm not a Catholic and I don't see that happening anytime soon. But I mean, I definitely think that like you can make a good argument for Catholicism. Um, and like, yeah. So that's something that my views have definitely kind of shifted towards. Um, what else? Those are some of the big things. Um, yeah, those are probably the two of the biggest things that, like, compared to, like, popular evangelical culture. I mean, obviously, like, young earth creationism, I would reject that. Um, and some churches definitely hold to that still. So, yeah, those are a few things. Good question. Thank you, Nas. Um, learning is fun. It's true. I love to just read and think about, like, these big questions. Like, there's so much out there in the world to, like, discover. And life is really just beautiful. And when we realize all the different questions out there, um, I think that's super cool because there's so much out there to know and to discover. And yeah, God is good. And it's amazing how much we can learn. So um, we are cut up on questions. If you had any other questions, we're going to go for about 15 more minutes and then we are going to close up shop after that. So, Thank you all for tuning in today and I appreciate your time and yeah, I really appreciate your time. This isn't goodbye, um, but I'm just like super um, honored that you guys have spent a little bit of your time here with us. So yeah, thanks for tuning in for a little bit and yeah, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask. I'll stay around for like 10, 15 more minutes um, and then yeah, we're going to close up shop. So hang on if you got any last questions. Um, yeah. Awkward silence is a way for questions. Um, yeah. So we are doing a podcast later today. We're going to talk about some stuff um, kind of related to Calvinism and like God's foreknowledge. That's going to be super fun. I'm super excited for that. I'm going to be doing that stream in like about an hour. So that's super exciting. Um, So that is that. And I will give it like three more minutes. And if there's no questions, I'm going to close up shop. So, yeah. <laughs> and apparently someone won the $2.4, the $2 billion Powerball in California, which is like legit crazy. Like that is so much money. Like how do you... I don't even know. Okay, we have something. Um, Jose Martinez says, yeah, so I think if one denies God's intervention in creation, then that form of theistic evolution is not a good one. Yeah, I agree. Um, and that's why I think that you can hold to like evolution and like say that God still intervenes or like God sets up like a teleological structure that really supports evolution. Um, there's all kinds of things you could say. I mean, like you could affirm evolution and still hold to some form of like intentional design. So that is definitely something that one can do. What would you do that with that money if you want? Uh, I don't even know. Give a lot of it away because I don't need $2 billion. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, Oh, gosh, I can't even imagine. Um, take care of my family. Um, give a lot away to my to Lynchburg City. That's where I live, or I live around Lynchburg City. Um, yeah, there's so many things. Yeah, I just, I it's just, I just think about all the good you could do. Like, I'm not like, oh, I'm so humble and I would like give out, give it all away. Cause no, I'd probably do things selfish, like go on like a really cool vacation to Europe or something like that. Um, and like buy a house for myself or things like that. So there's a lot of things like that, that would definitely happen. Um, but wow, you could do a lot of good as well. 
So, yeah. What are your thoughts on progressive Christianity? I really try to push like a mere Christianity. It's like, do you believe in like the fundamental tenets of Christianity? And I know that like there's some things that like you can't really affirm and be like a confessing Christian, but it's hard to draw that line. Like, what do you need to affirm to be like a mere Christian? Like, is it just like the Nicene Creed? Like, is it put into like your life? Like, is, that's one of the hard things. With my that's my big thought is like, how do we draw the line? Like, what's progressive Christianity and heresy versus like what's maybe like that doctrine versus what's like what's actually true um so that's a hard thing to draw the line on i think there's some examples you could bring up of like things that are like obviously like false like denying the authority of the bible like that seems something like you can't really affirm as a christian but is that heresy or is that just like a like you just have a bad theological belief if you hold to that if you hold to that that's the question and i don't really know so that's a really good question and something that we really gotta think carefully carefully about Jose also says, what are your thoughts on your death experiences and what apologetic value does it have? I think, hmm, I mean, I think there's, I definitely think there's something there. Like, I think that when you're looking at NDEs, there's something there that seems to be more than, to show you that there's something more than the material world. Um, so I think NDEs can really help make that case. And I think they're like an evidential chip that really pushes that forward. Obviously, we can't just expect naturalists to affirm them. Um, so that's a problem. But um, yeah, that's generally how I would take it is like the natural like that. Um, they're real. Um, and I think they're going to really push theism forward um, because I think it's going to be they're hard to explain from a purely materialistic perspective. Not saying you can't, but um, that's what I would say is something like that. So yeah, that's a really good question, though. The provisionist perspective. Welcome. Good to see you here. What's the best model of divine omniscience? That's a good question. Um, I don't know. That's hard. Uh, I would say some, like, form of, like, I don't, I'm not really a fan of Molinism. Definitely not a determinist. Um, yeah, maybe something like simple foreknowledge. I don't know, though. Like, this is hard for me. I kind of think that, like, um, God exists and God knows the future. And there's still, like, free choice in some sense. Maybe even, like, maybe, it, like, I'm I'm, get, I'm more and more comfortable with compatibilism recently, even though I wouldn't, like, fully affirm it. Um, and since that's the way it is, like, and how that works out, I don't really know. But, like, Christians have, like, harder problems, like the Trinity or, like, the Incarnation that we can say is a mystery. So I'm kind of content saying like, yeah, I don't really understand this. And there's an answer. I just don't really know it. Um, so that's what I would say. Thank you for congrats on 4K subs. I really appreciate it. Uh, super, super grateful for your support there. Um, yeah, 4K is it's special. Um, it's exciting. And she asked, one thing I really value about your channel is how friendly and respectful you are with everything you interact with. Well, thank you. I appreciate that a lot, Matthew. That's something I really try to do is like be friendly and respectful because I just think that like life's so much better um, when you love other people and you're friendly and respectful. It's just, it just goes so much better when you can live it life that way. Why am I not a fan of Molinism? Yeah. Um, so I just find counterfactuals weird. Like if we want to say like, Say you're you want to be a Molinist because you want to hold to like God having foreknowledge and there also being like human freedom. And that's like what pushes you towards Molinism is you still want to affirm both of these things. Um the counterfactual thing is weird because like it seems like to me under Molinism, Molinism and I could be wrong, um, people want to say, like, given a certain counterfactual, like I couldn't have done otherwise than I had given a certain situation. Like God puts me in a situation um where given the free choice, I'm gonna make this action rather than another one. That to me kind of sounds like determinism and I know it's different. I know there's clarifications and I know I'm sure I'm getting things wrong, but like, it just seems like it, it gets very close to like determinism. Um, so yeah. And also just thinking like God just has this like infinite knowledge of like counterfactual seems kind of weird to me. Um, so that's why it just seems like it adds a lot of philosophical like jargon Um and I don't really know if he really escapes the problem of freedom. So that's why I am not a fan of Molinism. Not saying I won't be one day. Um, and maybe I'll wake up tomorrow and be a lot more sympathetic to Molinism. But at the moment, I'm just not um, there. 
Congrats. I just actually just, well, thank you so much for just subscribing. I really appreciate that support. And I thank you for following me on Twitter. I really appreciate that. Um, and look forward to watching some videos. Thank you. I really appreciate that, Nas. Um, you're like previous videos, but, but Precious works too, LOL. Um, so, yeah, I appreciate that a lot. Um, and hopefully you find value in what we're doing here. It's the closest among free will positions to compatibilism. Talking about Molinism here. Yeah, I mean, part of me wonders, like, if you're going to be a Molinist, like, why not just be a compatibilist? Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, like, foreknowledge and freedom is a really hard thing. And it's, to me, I kind of, it gets into that thing where, like, um, with, like, Trinitarianism or, like, the Incarnation, where it's going to be something along the lines of, like, Christians, we got to affirm this. Like, there is foreknowledge and there is freedom. Like, how it works, whew, only God knows. So, all right, we're going to start to wrap things up. So, I will probably have time for, like, one or two more questions, if there's any. Um, so, I'll give it about 20 seconds. And then, if not, we are going to just close up shop because this has been the 4,000 Q&A special. Okay, well, we'll close up here. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming in today. Really appreciate you and support as we hit 4,000 subscribers. That's been huge. Um, so grateful for all you guys. Um, and, yeah, that's it. This is Indian Apologetics. Um, shout out to Than. Uh, really appreciate you um, coming here. I have not heard of Dynamic on Missions, so that sounds interesting. Um, Jose, always open the chat. Send me an email sometime. And yeah, this is it. This is it here in apologetics. Um, we will catch you next time. And God bless. Thank you so much.